Hey everybody. So not quite the coffee with Carrie this evening, but I had received a whole bunch of questions from a particular viewer and I wanted to answer them for you guys. Um, and there were so many, so I thought, you know what, I'll just do its own video all for you guys. So here we go. Just trying to see what's going on. All right. So this question is from someone named Murdoch. Um, and they're interested in becoming a funeral director, mortician. What kind of higher education is required to become a funeral director? You have to go to mortuary school and get at least an associate's. It depends on the state you're in if you need a bachelor's degree or not. So you have to look into the laws of your own state because every state is different. Now, you can do a lot of your prereqs at community college or online, but you have to find out what those are exactly for your state. So call a more choice school in your state. If you already have some education, see if it rolls over. Find out if, hey, you can you know, transfer some of these classes. Transferring is always great. Then you have to take less classes. If I need to get a master's, don't need a master's. The only reason you would ever need a master's is possibly to teach mortuary science. I'm looking to get my associates to start. It's a great start. You don't need an associates except in mortuary science. In lieu of going forth collecting more debt from student loans, is there an apprenticing option or a way I could shadow just to see if funeral directing is really what I want to do? Yes and yes. Go shadow before you do anything. Find out what a funeral director actually does because 80% of what we do, you don't see. Our day-to-day -day ins and outs, you don't see. So you need to know what those are. Some states you can do the apprenticeship beforehand, but again, you have to find out what's in your state and I'm not gonna answer that for you. We're all adults if you're you know, going to school. Uh, so you can find that information, it's online. You can call your state. Mortuary Science Licensing Board, you got it. You got it covered. You can do it. Just make the calls, do the research. There's no too old for being a funeral director. I know many people, many who have gone back to school and are super successful in it. And it's not a bad thing. I understand the need for professional appearances and looking as non-assuming as possible. But if I'm going to be honest, I'm heavily tattooed. I can remedy such things by wearing a turtleneck and gloves, and there's amazing cover-up makeup. Are tattoos something that are kept out of the industry? So people are going to judge whether you're in a funeral home, whether you're in a grocery store. Yes, if you have one on your face, you may not get hired for that. You know, we are a people-to-people -people industry. And presentation and acceptability is a thing. We didn't. We don't make the rules on this. This is just how society is. Now, it doesn't mean that because you have tattoos, you can't be a funeral director. I have tattoos. I have. What do I have? Five of them now, and they're not in you know big showy areas. I've got one on my wrist, which is going to get bigger at some point. I've got one here. I think a lot of people have tattoos that you would be surprised. They're just not in super visible places. Now, if they're on your hands, you can't really cover that. Are they offensive? To me, that is the question. Are they offensive tattoos? That is what I would ask more than, do you have a tattoo? Is what are they of? So I think that's probably my answer for that. What's a normal day? There really isn't a normal day. A lot of these, check out all sorts of my videos. Type in average day or normal day or day in the life of a funeral director on my channel and you're going to find a lot of these. Does it alter my view on the world and make me more depressed or make you appreciate life more? Um, I, no. You can't really know if your vision of or view is skewed by something when it's been your always, that's your view. So would my vision or view of the world be different if I was a teacher or if I was, which haha, I am now, um, or <laughs> if I was a mathematician? I don't know. 
None of us can answer that question because we've chosen the paths we've chosen, which gives us very definitive views. So I, I, I don't know that it changes my views because I don't know what they would be without this being part of me. Do you have anything you wish you could change in my industry? I wish that the industry would be the same across the board, completely the same in every state. Um, just everything would be the same. It'd be easier to work with people and to give advice and to give information. Is the term mortician outdated archaic? It really is. Um, I used it because it's catchier than carry the funeral director. <laughs> and in some states that doesn't encompass embalming. So it is still a word that means something, but it doesn't always get used. It's a very darker word, um, more Hollywood-esque, I would say, but it's still applicable. With people's fears of death and dying, do you still find yourself stigmatized? Do people look at you funny? Do they think you're weird? Um... I don't think so. <laughs> what I love is when I tell people what I do and they're like, really? Like, I, I don't know. I just pictured that you would do something different. I'm always like, what do you think I look like I should be doing? Like, what kind of job do I look like I should have? Um, that's always a funny statement to me. Like you, you look like, what is a funeral director supposed to look like? Sure. Uh, Got old guy in a black suit with a white shirt and a black tie with his hands in front of him. And I get that, but it's all changed. You know, it's completely changed from what it used to be. So it's kind of fun to break a stereotype and to not shock people, but to change their viewpoints on what it, a funeral director is or what a mortician is. And especially like little kids, I love being like, see, I'm not scary. It's, it's, you know, I'm very normal, <laughs> kind of nice <laughs> most of the time. Um, so it's nice to be able to change people's viewpoint on what they think a funeral director, mortician, and bomber should look like. Do you think this is a dying industry? No pun intended since cremation seems to be favored. No, people die. People need to be taken care of. That is what this role is a mortician by definition is someone who cares for the dead. The dead will always be there. Someone always will need to take care of them. So I don't think it's a profession that's ever going to end. It's always evolving. It's ever evolving. Know what the job entails. You wondered about some advice. Know what the job entails. Don't jump into any job. You don't jump into any profession or job without really knowing what you're doing in that job. Um, telling the person to check out my video to see their answers. But that's, I guess, would be my biggest advice. Well, thank you guys for joining. I'm rolling back to see some of your questions and stuff. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um embalmer and mortician. So mortician used to be just a word for the person who cared for the dead, whether they embalmed or not. So it's, it's still the same. Um, embalmer is someone who does embalming. A funeral director is someone who directs a funeral. But those terms have become like funeral director could encompass the position of embalming as well. It's a lot of gray area when you talk about those. Are there actually BS degrees for mortuary science? Yes, I have a bachelor's degree in mortuary science. Um, Cincinnati is one school that does a bachelor's degree in mortuary science. Is it illegal or desecration of a dead body if a watch or piece of jewelry taken off the departed? It's not desecration of the body because you're not injuring the body by doing that. It's just theft. <laughs> um, it's just plain old wrong. Yeah. Um, and no, I really, do you tell people there's no way you can do an open casket? A lot of times people have their opinion made up ahead of time without even knowing what the truth about the condition of the body is because the police officers have said something or the medical examiner investigator or the coroner, somebody has, you know, said something along the way without actually letting the professionals who work with bodies, pat, you know, tell the family about viewability. What is little? 
Well, Don, if you went to a Catholic funeral, you would have been at a church more than likely. But, okay. Did the massive amounts of flowers left for the Queen's death cause shortages and higher prices in the UK? You know, I don't know. Um, that's an interesting question. If they had to import more flowers, I would imagine some of those things were forecasted. Like, okay, when this happens, we know we're going to have to do this, this, and this right away. Like these protocols, I think, even within flower shops are going to have been foreseen because of historically when, you know, Princess Diana died and Prince Philip had died and, and everything. I think that there would be a precedent that they know is going to happen with things like that. Why are some funeral home workers so secretive about their work? I, I think it's just historic that been that way. It's been taboo to talk about because people don't want to hear about it. But now we're in a death accepting or death curious society and people want to know more. After this, I'm actually doing a video with um, Ryan, Brian, John, and uh, Ben, who is the embalming chemicals and the wild guy. Um, so he was on one of my videos previously, and we're going to be discussing or kind of giving our reaction to, because we just don't want to share our opinions. We've put off that video on the whole blood clot discussion. And you guys have sent me more emails, articles, and everything about the whole blood clot thing and if it's increased in bodies and all this stuff. So we are going to do a kind of roundtable discussion talking about one specific documentary that came out or a video article per se about it and giving our responses, our thoughts, what we're seeing, what we're hearing, because you guys are so interested in anything to do death and funerals and such. Hello. Hello, everybody. I think you guys are great. Thank you for being so awesome and supportive. Um, I did just start a whole, what do you want to call it? A membership thing on YouTube. I don't know. I kept getting questions about like, why didn't you, why don't you have Patreon? And when I can do kind of a Patreon thing within YouTube, it makes it a lot simpler. It's easier to share videos, easier to share notes with my members. So I just made a one flat, one level. So when you go to my main page, there's a subscribe button. It should say subscribed if you're already subscribed. And next to it's a join button. So if you want to join that, I'm going to do one or two lives a month just for that group. Um, yeah. So, and I'll be sharing, I'll just share posts in the uh, post section. What do you call it? <laughs> of the YouTube just for that group as well. Just some behind the scenes, private stuff for you guys. Um, a little more. So hello in Owasso. What do I look for when I attend a viewing with an open casket? I'm the worst. I am the worst. My ex-husband used to always kind of jokingly like, don't touch the body. So I always want to walk up and straighten something, brush some lint off, straighten a jacket, do something because you know, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to stuff. I'm not saying everything I do is perfect, but when I see something else, I can see what, how I want to make it up to my standards or the way I would do it. And so I want to touch and move things, straighten things, make things uh, centered. What is my favorite and least favorite part of working in the funeral industry? Um, we get to work with all kinds of people, every dynamic, every career path, every level of income, religion, you name it. We work with everybody. So that's going to be my answer for both. We work with every kind of person, whether they are the kindest, sweetest, most patient or whether they are the biggest jerks ever. 
like we encounter everybody and have to work with them and serve them and care for their loved one. Um, and that can be challenging some days and it can take a lot of our energy and who we are to do that. Can you, ooh, repainting on a grave marker. Um, you could, it's going to wash away. I don't think it'll stay very long. If you wanted to work in the business, but not go to school, what are my options? You can be an assistant. You can be an attendant. You can work funerals, visitations. You might be able to make arrangements depending on the laws in your state. You could help dress in casket possibly. Um, you can drive hearse. You can park cars. You can do removals depending on your state. Um, there is a lot of different things. Pre-need, all sorts of different jobs you can do. A coroner and a medical examiner. I like to tell people to go watch my two-minute videos on some of this stuff. But so a coroner is an elected position. They don't do any inspection on the body. They're not cutting into the body. They're not doing testing or anything like that. So they are the ones that kind of decide whether a body needs to go to the medical examiner. And the medical examiner is the pathologist. They are the ones that do an autopsy. They're the ones that investigate and determine a cause of death. So that's kind of the brief of the two differences. At a baby funeral, if you're getting ready to walk away from the grave and the parents want to take the kid out of the casket again to hold them, would you try and stop that? Yes, there is a lot of cemeteries. You cannot open a casket. That is their rule. That is their regulations. You cannot open a casket at a cemetery. Um, so it, not even any, you know, whatever that scenario, but if that's the rules of the cemetery, we're following the rules. So unfortunately, there's moments when you're working with baby families or children families that you have to be almost the bad guy and say, this is, this is it. Like we have to let go of this, this for, you know, this body, this human form. Now it's time because it could go on forever. And I don't want to ever take away a moment from a parent, but it is sometimes you have to make them go through the steps. I'm not saying I would be able to um, if I was the parent, but sometimes that's our role is we have to kind of keep them moving to do what just needs to be done. Law enforcement believes Aaron Carter's body was in the top for a long time, so it smells of decomposition. Yeah, I've heard a lot about it, except for today I saw that he was in a tub. If it was warm water, it is, shoo, zing. It's going to advance decomposition so fast. Um, it, it, yeah, it's not good. Heat is terrible for a body. So it doesn't mean that the body was in there that long. You can get decomposition. I mean, it happens as soon as you die. But you can get very advanced decomposition in a short period of time when you add heat. I mean, I've seen bodies that have only been dead for a few hours, but laying on heat vents where the hot air was coming out and their skin was peeling off of them. I've had people die in beds with a heating blanket in there because they weren't feeling good. And their loved one comes in two hours later to check on them and they're done. They've only been in there two hours and they get skin slip because their tissue is just rotting fast. So heat is not good. I am feeling better. Thank you for asking. Um, that concussion was, it's still like right now where my um, laceration is, it's, it's pretty healed, but it's still tender to the touch and still burns. Like right now I can, it's just throbbing where it is. It's the weirdest thing. I still forget things. I feel like I have some dementia going on, but um, not feeling as full body physically ill from it. So they uh, concussions are not, mm, not good. Let's see. Done. I've been watching videos on YouTube where people dig up their dead and change their clothes and pose them. Yes, it is a cultural thing that happens in one specific, I can't remember if it's a tribe or a whole community or what it is. 
Um, I haven't done a video on it yet. It's a kind of like a holiday and they do, they bring them out, they sit them around with them. It's wild. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. Um, neither of my kids are really showing interest. They've been around the funeral business for since they were born. And so they're now understanding it's not as cool, maybe, <laughs> of a profession as others. Um, but they don't mind it. They just, there's so many other things in the world they want to do. They think the people that work at the grocery store are the coolest people. And when they say when they want to grow up, they want to be workers at grocery stores. Like the way kids see the world is so beautiful. They don't see what we do. Um, and yeah, they just embrace all these different things. I love it. Um, I'm so cold today. So I keep trying on my little heater. I hope it's not too loud. What's the kindest gesture our family has done for you as a thank you. I was invited to a family reunion once and I wasn't able to go, but that to me is the kindest gesture of acceptance and showing me how important I was to that family. Um, so to me, that was a pretty big thing. Do I have an idea where Michael Jackson Cemetery is at? It's in uh, LA area, I believe. Isn't it? Has any of your coworkers played pranks? No, they really don't. Cared for the most modeled patient ever recently. Yeah, Erin. So modeling is when this tissue gets blotchy, like super blotchy. And it happens when someone dies. It usually starts on the feet and kind of works its way up. But it's one of the first is hospice nurses and stuff. They tell the family, these are your, you know, the things to watch for. And um, we can, it, it typically is not staining modeled. That's not staining the tissue. It's temporary sometimes for the most part. So once we get the blood flowing during embalming, that'll, it'll most more than likely clear out. It depends how long it's been there. What's the worst part of mortuary school? Taking classes in areas that you don't like. Like I hate math. So I don't know why I even picked my mathematician why I said that earlier. So taking accounting classes in those things, you have to take classes in so many variety of topics and categories that because you do so many different things within the funeral home and you wear so many different hats, but taking classes that I have no interest in. Oh, Tom says, I signed up for a continuing ed class. We're teaching, but it was last minute and I couldn't log on. You're going to do any more. Yes. What state are you in, Tom? It must be because I'm doing a lot of New Jersey and New York, Florida, Georgia, I think are the ones that are typically. But yes, I have actually next week two back to back. Um, it's going to be a lot of talking for me. Uh, back to back classes through continuing vision that you can do was the best part of mortuary school, uh, the relationships. So these people, I mean, that you can talk to throughout your whole life um, as professionals, you know, people are going to leave the business, but you, to be around like-minded people for the first time in a group, and there's not ever a, Carrie, are you sure you want to be a funeral director and blah, blah, blah. It's like this underlying acceptability and understoodness that you never have to discuss. It's never a thing. You just be yourself and do what you want. Hello, Joshua. It doesn't say your name, but I see your picture at the top of my thing. Hello. Used to be a political lock on who was hired in the business. Keep the job in a family. Um, yeah, kind of that, you know, your family took over your business. If someone wanted a natural or green burial, but they developed tissue gas, are you able to proceed or we have to involve? Nope, you can proceed. Um, don't can't, don't want to have public viewing and stuff. You're going to want to get them in the ground pretty quickly. Uh, yes, so I suture the mouth closed. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what some people run into. They go to more trade school and can't find an internship. But did you move? I know so many people hiring, but people are not willing to move. This is not a business where you can just go to school, stay where you're at for the majority. Move, you have to move to the jobs because there are hundreds of jobs open right now for apprentices, for students, for funeral directors. So many. Do people get weirder around Halloween with questions or odd looks knowing you're a funeral director? Not typically. Um, I've had people ask me about getting a, a casket or a coffin to put out in their you know yard for Halloween, but no, not typically. Yes, Forest Lawn is where Michael Jackson is. What do you look for at a visitation and other funeral home when you approach the casket? Uh, I already answered that one in this video. No, I have not seen a supposedly dead person. That's like not, doesn't really happen. It happened once last year in Detroit. And that's the only time I've ever heard ever that happening really in America. This is, it's typically, if you hear it happen, it's um, in areas that don't have great medical care. They don't have to be pronounced. They do, they can go right to the grave. Um, a lot of extenuating circumstances there. It's not really a thing. Uh, me, Josh, and the kids are doing great. Josh just had his birthday last week. So over the weekend, just got to kind of celebrate him and just spend some time. It was really good. Did you connect with hospice nurse Julie? No, I have not yet. Um, I emailed several people, several podcasters. Um, and then going to be doing some videos with some different podcasters, um, including as uh, faces of the forgotten, I believe. <laughs> um, so there's some that you guys had recommended. I did reach out to and yeah. How do you think burials will change in the future? it's hard to predict. Um, you know, traditional is still alive and well, it's not like it has stopped. I see more natural burials happening, more of that coming into all areas of the country. There's just so many disposition options that are on the rise or on the horizon that are going to be coming available to everyone. Um, it's just going to be a while. Can a person have an open casket without having the eye caps put in? They can, yeah. How many miles of carpeting do you think the old timer funeral director has vacuumed? Legit. I mean, it is a, a solid workout um, to vacuum at the funeral home. I mean, it's it's all day, every day. You're vacuuming. You vacuum in the morning, you vacuum after the funeral, you vacuum in the morning, you have <laughs> all day, every day. It is Joshua, Joshua M. Um, I saw someone a day before he passed and his eyes were clouded over. Does this happen to everyone? Typically after you die, it does. Um, but yes, the, the proteins and things in your eyes just change and the coloring changes. Uh, I think I did a two minute video on why that all happens and talked a little about the science of it. I'll have to check. What do you think about those past cases where funeral homes said they did not know what leaking was from the casket was? They said it was not from body. You would have to give me a specific case. That's pretty general that I, it's hard to respond to that. Awesome, Rhonda. You'll do great. You will do great. No, bodies cannot rise up. They cannot sit up. It does not happen ever. I don't care whose uncle brothers, aunts, cousin told you does not happen. Hi, Ruth. I heard the spine is broke, so it won't rise up. No, no, nobody's spine is broken. Why did the coffins in a mausoleum have leather covers on? You'll have to send me some pictures or something. I need to come to New York. Um, that would be fun. That's on my dream. I want to come go to Broadway and go to a show. I love musicals. 
You don't pronounce your T. Give me a word, Shelly. <laughs> what word am I not pronouncing my T? Uh, I do follow the Mountain Large. I don't watch a lot of YouTube, even though I'm on here. Um, but I do know of him. And I think I do follow his channel. Like I subscribe to his channel. But um, I don't watch a lot of the videos. 50% morticians drop out of the business. I know that when I was in school, the statistic was for female funeral directors that only one in three would still be in the business after three years. I would say if I look at my mortuary class that probably um, from the people I know, it is about 50% that are still in the business. A lot have left. Um, a lot didn't really stay in it very quickly. A lot have left after a few years. And it's all for varying reasons. It's not because of the business being bad. Sometimes it's just situational or it just doesn't you know, sometimes it's scheduled. Sometimes it's just whatever. Mitten, mitten, mit, mitten. How am I supposed? Am I supposed to say mitten, mitten, mitten? Oh my word! Okay, Nathan Morris. Who is Nathan Morris? Um, yes, uh, he had invited me to come down to his one performance and I just, I couldn't, I can't remember what I was doing that weekend. And I was like, no, I just can't do it. Um, I already had commitments, but yeah, I would love to do a video with him. Even if we just do a zoom or something, we'll have to, we'll have to do that. Okay, a friend was murdered last month by a shotgun blast. He was shot two times in the back and it was a 12 gauge blast. The funeral home asked that no one touch him. What would you think the reason for that? I would suspect that maybe just because of how he was laying or, you know, like what they had on him, especially they didn't want somebody to come up and touch his chest. I, I don't know, unless he had some damage to his face. I'm not sure. See, like when I say mortician, I say t t, but mitten, mitten, there doesn't need a t. It's a silent double t, Shelly. It's a silent one. You've just been saying it wrong the whole time. <laughs> oh, six feet under. I will be talking about that here soon in another video. No, I've had never had anybody not show up from the family when we got somebody ready. How often do you have to clean up feces and other? It's pretty common. I mean, if they've been eating and they have bowel bowels in their bowel bowel movements in their bowel, they're gonna they're gonna come out for the most part. But it's I don't know. It's not like that big a deal. You just wash it off and move on. <laughs> oh no, Shelly, you're fine. Um, totally fine. I do. I talk very nasally, very, very nasally. I say some words kind of youpery. I think my mom is from Minnesota. And so some stuff she has said one way, I think I say it the same way, even though I've, you know, it's not an accent or anything. It's just certain words and how you pronounce them. Um, yeah. Is time management an issue for you? <laughs> well, um, because I keep taking on more projects and throwing more balls in the air. Yes. Yes, it is. Squally. I, um, I do it to myself because I keep taking on, but I have an idea and I go with it and then I have another idea and I go with it and then I want to do more and then I keep going and then I wonder why I get stressed out. But it's one of those, I hate to like, my thought is if I have an idea and put it on the shelf, someone else might get the idea first. So I got to go, go, go with it. Yeah, mausoleums smell like, I don't know that they smell like death, but they just, they have their own funk smell to them. 
Yeah. No, nobody ever hangs bodies by a hook on the back. So no, that is not, no, mm -mm, no, not the case. So it really bothers me that that one, um, there's a pretty popular, somebody bought a old funeral home or it used to be a funeral home and it runs at like, does ghost tours there and all this stuff. And um, that they show these hooks in the basement and say that it is hooks that they hung the bodies on. No, no, they're not. No. Yes. La um, Lauren is one of my good friends. So little miss funeral is one of my good friends. She's like my little sister. So Oh, all right. I got to wind down because I got to get ready. We're going to do a recording on the blood clot discussion and chat about whether blood clots have increased since all of this COVID stuff and vaccine stuff and everything. We're going to address the conversation that is happening in media and in the news and stuff, and just kind of talk about it a little bit. So maybe answer some of your questions that you guys keep throwing at me about this whole thing. So who cares what she does? She's classy and very sexy. Me? Do the smell chemicals ever get nauseous? No. Oh, to be a member of the mortuary crew. So on my main page on YouTube, it'll have a subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, well, next to it, there is now a join button. Click on that. And I'm going to do some posts a month for you guys. Make sure to give you shout outs, um, do some lives just for you guys. And I don't know, maybe some other fun stuff along the way. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Play along with, play around with it and see what kind of things I like to, um, I don't know if you guys want to connect with me a little more. I like to give you that opportunity and I like to get to know some of my people who watch all my videos and stuff. So it's really fun. So I'm excited about the mortuary crew, but thank you guys. Um, I will see you soon and yeah, watch for this video about blood clots to come here later this week and tomorrow will be a two minute video. I think it's the part two of positioning hooks because I got so many questions on my first video on positioning hooks, speaking of hooks, that I did a part two just to explain a little more about them for you guys. So go check out that two minute if you haven't already. Thank you guys. Bye.